This segment of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. It's time once again to Checkpoint 110. It's like calls from the public. Remember that? Call, call, call. Call. Patrick writes, I currently have a Linux server in a closet that I want to set up to use with VPN. I have found so many solutions, but I really would like it if I didn't have to use any additional software on my Mac and could just use the built-in VPN connection service. Do you know of any v VPN server packages which will support this? You know, if you want to go with the most universal, it seems to be, at least in my experience, PPTP. Uh, I've found like on like all versions of Windows, modern wise, PPTP. and PPTP, point to point tunneling protocol, as opposed to IPsec, PPTP. which is still pretty cool too. Um, PPTP, of course, has its problems with the MSChat v2 oh. uh, authentication, but um, you know, that aside, uh, it's still pretty good protocol. There's easy ways to set it up. Uh, I know that there's a great tutorial I was following for Debian for using both uh, PopTop mm -hmm. as well as PPTPD. So those might be two that you want to check out. Um, and of course, we value your suggestions. So feedback at hack5.org if you want to suggest something other than OpenVPN, because Jonathan, or sorry, not Jonathan, um, is looking for a, uh, uh, Patrick is looking for Patrick. a Yes. VPN server that's just not going to require software to be installed. So it's either IPsec or PPTP. Right on. All yep. right, cool. Thank you very much. And our next email came from Jonathan. He writes, just wanted to know if you if you recommend disabling the SSID broadcast while configuring routers. Does this help increase security? No. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all. No, I mean, all with right. Kismet, you can basically <laughs> see those hidden networks anyway. So, I mean, you can use it as a sense that you know, I, I always recommend use anything at your disposal to add layers of security. Yeah. Um, if you want to just do MAC address, uh, what is it called, um, authentication on your wireless router, sure, that's another layer. It's not to say somebody can't spoof a MAC address to get on. Um, if you want to do disabling your SSID, that might trip someone up for all of 10 seconds until <laughs> they see the probe or something. Um, otherwise, uh, you know, I think like some of the most secure wireless uh, setups I've seen are ones where people use like WPA2, either with radius mm. or a pre-shared key, and then after that, it just gets you into a DMZ where you, you know, like our previous question from Patrick, have to use a VPN to then get into the rest of the network. So, you know, layers, it's all pretty good, but yeah, I mean, we you could throw it in there. We should do layering. We could, in fact, we could do a segment on PPTP. And, on all uh, of those. And stealing wireless from your neighbors. Cool. I wouldn't know anything about that, though. Okay. And the next one comes from Wayno. Hi, Wayno. He writes a, okay, this is how I say it. A pound is technically called a octothorpe. 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 Well, ASCII decimal key pound. 35 or Unicode point U plus 0023, according to Wikipedia at least, uh, is in fact a number sign. And as it turns out, this is typically called number sign, yeah. in Commonwealth English a hash or a hash key as opposed to, you know, American English or in Quebec English where it is considered a pound sign. And we probably oh. just do this to confuse the British because they've got their British pound sterling signs. But anyway, that's my two cents. So to confuse matters more, in Canadian English, the symbol is considered a number sign. Whereas in Australia, Russia, and parts of Europe, that sign is represented by a capital N with an underlined O next to it, and it's called a numero sign. Now, there's also the musical symbol sharp, which looks yes. like a number sign, but it's not, despite what Microsoft may say about their programming language of the same name. <laughs> so, you know, to confuse everyone less, or, or more, more. <laughs> The telephone engineers in the 1960s attempted to coin a universal name for the symbol called an octothorpe, or an octotherp. It actually has several spellings, and obviously never became popular, at least not here. So thanks so much for sending that in. Yeah. I, like weird trivial knowledge. I do too. Yeah, I actually uh, I'm gonna I used call to it? be in choir, and I would call it a sharp. A sharp. Yeah. yeah see, uh, you know, because this, this came up because we were talking about bash scripting and the shebang. You know, she for sharp, for oh, right. pound sign, for... Bang, for exclamation. Whatever you want to call it. Yeah. So I think maybe we should get the entire Linux community to get behind this and from now on call it an Octothorpe bang. Uh, yeah. Save me. We'll be right back with the Titanellus photo of the week. Sounds good to me. <laughs> 
Domain.com is owning the competition with cheap domain names and hassle-free service. Our Hack5 fans are making Domain.com one of the fastest growing domain registrars in the world. And if you're setting up a website to show off your pictures of your cat, brag about your new boating skills, or do something business related, Domain.com is the best place to buy a domain name for your new idea. Domain.com's easy checkout process makes it simple to find your domain name and set up your website without hassles. Domain.com's domain discovery system quickly shows you available names, making it easy to select the domain extension that's right for you. Find a suite.com or get a .co and save a character. Already have a domain somewhere else? It's cool. Transfer it to Domain.com for only $7.61 and get an extra year free. The guys at Domain.com are huge fans of Hack5 and want to hook up other Hack5 fans. Use the coupon code HAK5 and get 15% off your next domain purchase or transfer. It's only $6.47 for transfers. Don't forget, when you think domain names, think Domain.com. Time once again for the Technos Photo of the Week, and we have a special one. <gasps> because it's one of my favorite holidays of the freaking year. Happy Halloween! This one comes from Jason. Dude. With this awesome pumpkin carving that he created himself in Photoshop. And, and then, then he spent the entire night creating it on his got, pumpkin. Like, a skull and he used with an USB LED on the inside. Off of it? With a very lit LED. 12 LEDs with a 9 volt. Awesome! I love it! I am a freaking. Halloween, like crazy person. Yeah, because well, my you're mother. Crazy person, and then Halloween happens, and then it's just the two of them are. Just By there. the way, YouTube Wormy Tea, and you will find my mom's uh -oh. episode on HGTV -E called Extreme Halloween. E A. Wormy Tea. Ah. Hmm. It's true. All right. Little known trivia fact. Let's. Now, nah, speaking of trivia, let's get into some trivia of the week. This week's trivia question not having to do with Halloween is, well, actually, last week's was, this. the name Cyberpunk was first coined by what author in 1983? Do you know that? Was it Gibson? No. No. It wasn't. Was it, oh, uh, was it, um, um, dang it. The name is escaping me now. I'm, I'm thinking about uh, first the Metaverse. Name is Bruce. No, that's not what I'm Are you talking about. about Neil? Neil Stevenson, yeah. No. No? Not Neil, no. Oh, it came from, I, I'm probably going to murder his last name, but it's Bruce Bethke? Bethke? I will have to look that up then. Mm -hmm. All right. And this week's trivia question is, Metasploit was originally coded for what purpose? Representing ASCII cows. Oh, wait, we don't tell them until next week. Okay, anyway, <laughs> answer at hack5.org slash trivia to win some of Shannon's swaggity swag. It's over there. And remember that you can support us free and easy by subscribing in iTunes, YouTube, and other places where fine podcasts are served. Hack5 better than subscribe. Yes, you can. And we also have tons of really fun and cool goodies over at the Hack Shop, which is hakshop.com, like our new USB rubber ducky. And, and the case that goes. We got the, brand new oh, yeah. cases they look for them, good. too. Yeah, they look they're, good. they're two bucks. Nice they're little like, throw on. Yeah, boom. Oh, yeah. Awesome. And it makes it look like that same USB key that you get at every conference ever. Like and you're like, plate. oh, hey, yeah. Here's uh, the, the PowerPoint presentations on the USB key. Uh, we're going to buy 100 million units, you know, like, yeah. and then like, <laughs> okay. Anyway. Non-branded, they're beautiful. Twitter, Google+, Facebook is all the places where you can find out about us. And you can also check out our sister show, Hack Tips, on Fridays. On Fridays. Tips about stuff. It's good. You can find it at hack5.org, just like you did on this show. Woohoo! Till next week. I'm Darren Kitchen. And I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your techno lust. Trust your techno lust. That just about wraps up this episode of Hack 5, but that's not how we close the show anymore, so we're going to try it again. Happy Halloween! Bye, Michael. This time on the show, Shannon falls over. Paul maintains a jib arm, and Darren decides to learn how to pronounce Octothorpe. Tune in for a very special Hack 5. Your, your jib is very erect. <laughs> that is not the show title. Paul's Erect Jib. <laughs> That's awesome. That's a great title. You should do top gear yes. intros where it has Ready. nothing to do with what's on the show.
And that's Pa. Pa's over there on the jib. He erected it. Pa! The camera guy! Pa! The camera guy! guy.